So multiple slit and thin film interference. Um, I like this one. Diffraction gratings are so groovy. Um, I've also seen like diffraction grate things like G-R-E-A-T, grate. Um, but let, let's talk about this. So we have a multiple slit interference. What does that mean? Here it's a, you have what's called a diffraction grating, which means you have a whole bunch of different openings for the light to pass through. And because of that, uh, we could define this D right here. That could be the slit uh, separation, we could say. Um, so maybe we'll just put it right here. So we'll say the slit separation. Uh, maybe I'll put that down right here. So I'll say D. And we'll say that's the slit separation. Um, and that'll be measured in, I hope you agree, meters. And then we're going to have, of course, lambda is the wavelength of light. That's measured in meters as well. We're going to have um, n, which is going to be the order. So this, in this case here, n can be, it's like an, a running number. It can be n equals 0 or 1 or 2 or 3, dot, 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 something like this. Um, that's how it'll work. And then theta will be this angle right here that we've drawn here. So if we try to do this, the way it would work then is you could set, um, this is actually, the, the reason why you have this is because, do you remember from uh, topic four before, uh, we have constructive interference. If the path difference between you know two different um, beams of light in this case is equal to n lambda, so some multiple of lambda, that's where this n lambda came from. That's because it's constructive interference. So this tells you basically where your peaks will be. And if you actually want to draw the peaks themselves, your intensity, it'll go like this. It'll be like, a, you know, sort of these really sharp little peaks like this right here. It'll just sort of repeat like this, like that, something like this. Now this right here will be your peaks. Um, I think that's about all you really need. So let's just take a look and see if we can uh, do the next equation, which is with thin film interference. And then we'll see an example. So here, if we have a thin film, what we have is we have a, a, a thin film. We'll say the thickness of it, we'll call it D. So uh, that will be measured, of course, in meters. I love this one does not simply understand IVS HL physics. That's from Lord of the Rings, right? This guy always dies in movies, doesn't he? Or shows, um, like in uh, Game of Thrones, the, uh, in the very first season, right? But anyway, so we have an N. This, this gets a little bit confusing because in the past, we've often been using these order. So we can say like zero, one, two, three. N has always been this order. Here, however, They've got M being the order, where N here is the index of refraction. So just watch out for that. That's the difference between N and M. This N changes. It becomes the index of refraction of this light, uh, not this light, this material, whatever it's passing through, this thin film here. So M can be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, whatever numbers you want. And lambda is the wavelength of light, which is measured in meters. And index of refraction has no units. So we end up with this equation right here, that we have constructive interference <clears throat> if 2dn equals m plus a half lambda. Now we also have uh, destructive interference if 2dn equals m lambda. Basically, you just have to look at what it is that they're giving you and you can figure this out. What's really going on is we have light, like well, one beam of light here, one ray of light. It's coming in and it's reflecting directly off that surface, this thin film. So it reflects directly off. There you go. It's received somewhere over here. We have some of that light, however, will go through that uh, into this material here, into this thin film. Uh, and of course, it will refract. So maybe, for example, if this thin film had a higher index of refraction than air did, then it'll do something like this. Right? It'll slow down. So that means, remember, we learned about this in topic four. The angle here in is, this angle here is smaller than that one. I guess it slows down. And then we could say, great, it does that. Then it bounces off. And then it does the same thing, except now it refracts in the other way around. So here, if you look, the angle is very small. Now it becomes bigger. And these endings end up hitting parallel like this. So you can basically talk about where you're going to have peaks, which is destruct uh, constructive interference, and where you have uh, dark spots, which is destructive interference. Actually, that's about all you need, the theory you really need for it. Let's see now if we can uh, deal with a couple of questions here. First of all, what will be the shape of the interference pattern uh, that's formed by monochromatic? Remember, that just means wavelength equals just like just one number. Uh, light that's passing through a double slit. Well, what happens is, is if you have a double slit, what we can do is we can maybe try to draw the try to draw the interference pattern here. Uh, what will happen is this: you're going to have a, a single slit uh, thing right here that's going to modulate this double slit thing. So you have basically multiple slit interference. Remember that? I mean, that wants to do this sort of shape. 
but it's going to be modulated by this single slit thing. So remember the, the shape of a single slit uh, diffraction did something like this, like that. So what you can end up having, it's going to look kind of weird, but watch this carefully here. You're going to end up having, if this is in the center, I guess, let's do it like this. So here can be theta, this could be the intensity. We could say it's going to look like, watch very, very good, it's going to be kind of cool here. So you're going to see it go kind of up like this right here, and then this thing is going to go down like this. I'm drawing a dotted line for a reason. Because what's going to happen is you want to have this kind of shape, but you also want to have this kind of shape. So what you're going to do, you're going to have all these little squiggles like this, but they're going to be sort of bound by this thing. That's what I mean by modulated by. So now it's time to have a little bit of fun here and try to draw maybe a different color. I'm going to try to draw some little squiggles that have to fit within this. I'm just going to just start to draw squiggles here. It doesn't have to be exact, but something like, you know, this right here. I'm going to go up and down and up and down, like really high things right here. Probably have a peak right in the middle. This. No, it doesn't make that sound. Basically, if you get the idea here, this is something here that's this kind of shape right here. Looks a little bit complicated, but you have to just think it's going to be a regular multiple slit diffraction thing that's modulated by a single slit. So this is the shape of it. I think it's kind of interesting. Uh, then we have a real question here. Parallel beam of monochromatic light. Uh, that means we can find lambda. Hey, that's the whole point of it. We're supposed to find lambda. And it's incident on a diffraction grating. So that means we have a situation like before. You know, we have a whole bunch of different holes here. We need to find this D, I guess, right? We're going to need to know that diffraction grating. We know there's 600 lines per millimeter. Now, the light's initially normal to the grating, which means it's, you know, this way over here like this. That's the way the light is. And second order maximum is seen at an angle of this much to the normal. So what this means then is we have a second order maximum, uh, which in this case right here, let's see, that's, well, let's look at the equation first. Maybe that'll help us. This equation here, n lambda equals d sine theta. We're going to need that. Okay, so n lambda equals d sine theta. Try to remember that. Here we go. We'll use n lambda equals d sine theta. n then will be my, if it's second order, that means n equals 2. So you're okay with that? That means then I can put in a 2 here. So 2 lambda equals d sine, and then theta is my angle that, you know, where I see the maximum. So in this case right here, it's going to be 43 degrees. And I need to solve for lambda, so that's going to be pretty easy, right? So lambda is going to be d sine of 43 degrees, all that divided by 2. Pretty easy. I just need to find d. See, that, that sort of tells me my mission then is uh, I need to find out what's d in order to find lambda. So how will I get d? I need this distance right here. But they've told us a bit of information here. Look carefully. They said there's 600 lines per millimeter. What does that mean? That means there are 600 lines like this per millimeter. I'm going to try to convert that to meters first. I need things in meters. So I'm going to try to get something that cancels out the millimeters. So I'll put millimeters on the top. I'll put meters on the bottom. So do I know how many millimeters are in a meter? I do. There's a thousand. There's a thousand millimeters in one meter. So that means the millimeters cancel out. So now I have 600,000 lines in one meter. This is going to be useful because I, uh, not, I mean, some people, we can actually call this capital N. That's one way to do it. But D is always 1 over N. So this is actually maybe an important uh, thing you might want to know about. I don't think you have to necessarily memorize it. If you look carefully at the units for it, it should work out. So let me show you something here. The reason why is because I need to know this D in meters. Do you notice here I have 600,000 lines every meter? I want how many meters per line is it? So if that makes any sense, I want to do 1 over this answer. So that's why this D equals 1 over N sort of came from that. It just says, well, all I could do is I know the 600 lines per millimeter. I fix that to meters. But I have to do 1 over that. That'll get me meters per line. And I needed it in meters, didn't I? I needed a D in meters. That's why I do 1 over 600,000. Oops, too many zeros. I end up with an answer of D equals, hopefully you're following with me here, I end up with that D equals um, 1.6, 6 repeating obviously, so I'll say 1.67 times 10 to the minus 6 meters, which should make sense. If you have 600 line, uh, 600,000 lines in one meter, it should make sense you have not many meters for one line, right? It should be a very, very small number. So I plug that into here, so I end up with, maybe I'll do it in a different color. 
before I get lambda, equals d, which is 1.67 times 10 to the minus 6 meters, uh, times a sine of 43. I may need to make sure that's in degree mode, so make sure my calculator is in degree mode, and divide that by 2. So I'm going to check my mode on my calculator and make sure I'm in degrees, which I am. So I'll just sine of 43, that times 1.67 times 10 to the minus 6. I get that answer, and I take that divided by 2. I end up with a wavelength is uh, six, uh, 569 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. You could say that. That could be your answer. Whoops. 0.69. Uh, how many decimals am I allowed? Ah, I guess I'm allowed three significant figures, so I can say that. This is fine. However, maybe I want this in nanometers just to sort of compare. So if you look at this, I move this over by 2, and that'll make it 10 to the minus 9. So I can say it's 569 nanometers. There's my final answer. Not too bad, huh?